Greetings and welcome back. This is the second Holocron in the Hope of Rebellion starting guide for 2023 for the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes mobile game. If you haven't watched the first of this series, please go back and watch that or you'll probably be very confused. All right, let's get into it. This is Hope of the Rebellion, second part. We're finishing out to level 85. We're going to talk about the expectations, what it's going to look like to play this account through this transition. Move into block one where we build the CLS team to relics. Prepare for block two for the profundity. And we'll talk a little bit about the shops again, make sure we finish that out in the right way. If you started out free to play and the account's approaching 85 and it is time to get going on the first relic. Um, at 85, we're working on the Geo Fleet. We're, we're doing that under the Executrix Capital Ship. Can't expect to be in the top five yet. There's a bunch of hyperdrive players that probably came in around you and they're quite far ahead of you. They started with a bunch of ships already at level 85 or level 80 in this case and, and five star ships, but easily taken up to level 85. Squad Arena is similar and uh, also we don't care in Squad Arena. Let everybody be ahead of us. That's not such a big deal. All right, you're going to be out of credits. I've talked about this several times, but uh, when, when you're in this early game, Leveling characters up takes a ton of credits. Leveling up the skills, even uh, putting the stars on the characters takes a lot of credits. So every time you want to build a new character and a new team, it just drains every credit that you might have. That's normal. Everybody goes through that, and it stays that way for, you know, a couple of years. <laughs> now, it, uh, after about six months, you should reach a point where uh, you'll have some credits in the bank and you'll be able to build teams uh, from a bank of credits. But, uh, but yeah, you'll have a lack of also the purple skill materials, the omega skill materials. Uh, you'll never have enough for the characters. That's also normal. You'll feel like you never have any credits to work on mods. My recommendation is always uh, take a period of three days. You know, let's say you, you build characters and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, just don't spend credits. Don't build characters. Don't do stuff in the account, just, just wait a few days, let the credits build up. At the end of those three days, do everything you're gonna do with mods, spend all the credits that you need to, to get your mod strategy working, and then whatever's left over, start working on your characters again, advance their levels and do what you need to do. But uh, if you don't set aside credits to work on mods, it's always gonna feel like you can't afford it. It's the other way around. You can't afford not to work on your mods, save up, do the mod work, and then whatever's left over is what you have available to work on characters. It's likely that you'll be stuck on Fleet 5e. 5e normal is just a monstrous mode. Um, it starts out with a bunch of TIE fighters. You shoot at them, they dodge, they give turn meter to the enemy capital ship. He sort is, uh, summons in more TIE fighters with reinforcements, gets a bunch of turns, and shoots everything you have off the board. Uh, a tank, a good tank is critical for this node, and uh, Hound's Tooth or Sunfact typically are what's needed. You can also get through it with just, uh, uh, like, let's say a strong offensive uh, fleet and punch through. So uh, there, there's some ways. And also, uh, someone has said that if you use Tarkin and you bring in, um, uh, like, uh, certain ships that, that, that hit hard, you bring them in as a reinforcement. They have um, uh, the ability to attack back when they're hit. So as those TIE fighters hit, you attack them back, and you'll be able to kill them that way. So there's some ways through this, but in the very early game on your way up to 85, you probably don't have good enough resources to just pound through it. So it's a hard node, and this is a picture out of my game. I've never bothered to go back and three-star that node, so you could see, even though I could three-star everything around it, I could only one star that node, just get by it and uh, keep working. But don't be surprised. Um, uh, in, if you, uh, that got left in from the Imperial Doctrine about farming Mando, but, uh, but yeah, so anyway, don't be surprised if you're stuck there. The moral of this story, starting out here, uh, you don't have to feel like you're winning when you hit 85. Uh, and in fact, uh, I don't know how many times I've answered that question where people send me their account and they're in a panic and they say, you know, what am I doing wrong? Well, you're not doing anything wrong. You're fine. You're in great shape for level 85. You're, you're where I would expect you to be at level 85. I don't, 
I don't think you're going to get number two in fleet at level 85, right? It just, you don't have the resources, you don't have the characters built, you haven't had access to the gear. So, yeah, just, just set your expectations at something reasonable. All right, finishing out block zero, we're going to be working on Snow Trooper. We're going to be opening bronze impacts with the friendship points. You get a lot of snow trooper shards, and you can have him at seven stars. If you don't have him at seven stars, you can finish him out with farming if you need to. Um, he isn't the best trooper for the team, but I've had a lot of success with him. Uh, in my accounts, uh, I like relicking this character. He can go with Iden Versio later. Uh, he's, anyway, so he works well with the initial trooper team. He works well with uh, the Iden team later on. So it's never going to be a wasted relic. Dark Trooper is better. We just don't have the room to farm up Dark Trooper's shards and get him to seven stars. But if for some reason you refuse to, to relic the Snow Trooper because he's not simply the best for that role, then by all means, do your own thing. Uh, I don't know how you're going to fit it into this journey, but, uh, uh, but, but you can, right? You, you figure that out for yourself. Good luck with it. My recommendation, Snow Trooper is easy. He does his job. He hits hard. He has a big area effect skill and uh, goes through those assault battles like a hot knife through butter. All right, Piet won't be Relic, so it is important that you build up his gear and put your best speed mods on him. Uh, also make Stark fast. Uh, you need at least 280 on Piet and 253 on Stark, and this is with the idea that these characters aren't going to be relic and the 253 is simply the number that you need to be at so that when you uh, activate Piet's skills and trigger instances of uh, the Emperor's Trap, then uh, uh, Stark gets to go right after Piet. So you need some decent speed mods. Uh, 280 means that under Veer's lead, they're actually acting at 300 speed. And that's really where you need to be uh, to make this team tick. So try to get that there. With only one relic uh, trooper on the team, it's going to be hard. And again, that ranged trooper on the end uh, will most likely be uh, a storm trooper out of the shop because we don't have time to get uh, star, um, get him in there. Okay. As the account gets to 85 and the first teams get stabilized, uh, the cantina energy is going to be on... Uh, L3 and Kira. Um, we're trying to build a really strong dash team early on. So as soon as we can relic dash Rendar, we're going to put him at relics and we're going to want to have a team right behind him. There's a bunch of reasons for that that I'll go into later. Also, we have to build up the bounty hunter team. So as soon as we've got these geos going for fleet, the Imperial troopers need to be prioritized for the assault battle. And then the bounty hunters really have to get gear after that. For players willing to purchase the Hyperdrive bundle, it provides so many characters for this build that we already want, and we're going to get them at 7 stars and level 80. In my opinion, this build, if you don't use the Hyperdrive bundle, it's going to be much, much more difficult. The amount that eases up when you buy the Hyperdrive is insane. So... If you have the funds to consider it, strongly consider that hyperdrive bundle. There's a lot of video games out there that if you bought them for your Nintendo or uh, PlayStation or whatever, you'd be spending this much or more money to get started on the game anyway. So from my point of view, think of it like buying the game in the first place, buy the hyperdrive bundle, and don't look back. The energy and cantina farms are enough that uh, just easing up on those is a huge amount of freedom for this account. The total timeline is still set by relic cycles and when we can get some of these ships to seven stars and things like that. So the farming part will go faster, but I expect somewhere between 12 to 14 weeks in reduction in the total time for this journey. So 40 weeks instead of 54, that's, that's a huge savings in time. 14 weeks is a huge savings. Huge. Hyperdrive players start at 85. You can follow this guide in the same way as you would free to play. You're just ahead on gear characters and, of course, the timing itself. You still want to build geos. You still want to work toward the malevolence. And even though they're not um, hyperdrive characters, you still want to backtrack and build them. So I've heard people say before, yeah, but they're not in the hyperdrive bundle. And there's all of this other stuff that is in the hyperdrive bundle. Why wouldn't I just work on the characters that I've already got? 
So if that's your philosophy, again, as always, these are guides. You can do whatever you like, but uh, I'm telling you, the best thing to do is go back, build those geos, even though they're not part of the hyperdrive bundle. Still should build Bastila, Jedi, Troopers, all the stuff, and Relic your Snow Trooper. I think that's still the whole plan. Now, if you're willing to spend and you really want to optimize this, you buy the Hyperdrive bundle first, you buy the Bosk, the Houndstooth bundle from the Millennium Falcon journey. So in the journey guide, you go to Millennium Falcon. It has a button there for store. You click on that and you'll see this bundle in there for $24.99. It lets you unlock Bosk and the Houndstooth right away. It gives you a head start. If you hyperdrive and buy this bundle and get the Houndstooth going right away, it's crazy. And use as much of the gear as possible on Bosk right away. The hyperdrive bundle is a little bit different than the free-to-play version of building this account. So once you have the hyperdrive bundle, use a lot of that gear on Boss, get that Houndstooth up and running, and you'll be top five in fleet the day you click these buttons. Um, for the crystals that you get with the hyperdrive bundle, uh, again, I know that there's a bunch of people that have gone in there and they just click buttons and start building a character and then they find out that they're missing like a piece of gear for him and they just go in there and they spend some of those crystals and get a character to gear, gear 12 right away. Don't do that. Spend every crystal that you get with the hyperdrive bundle only on cantina refreshes. Get your energy refreshes every day, three of every type, and just uh, uh, the last bit that I would uh, say once you run out of the hyperdrive bundle crystals, by my calculation, um, another $20 worth of crystals after that would uh, benefit the account a lot. Again, I'm not telling you you have to spend money, but for those willing to spend uh, up to $100, this is what it would look like for the absolute most efficient build path. So you buy the hyperdrive bundle, you get the Bosque Millennium Falcon bundle, use the crystals for refreshes. When those crystals get low, you use another $20 to get more crystals and just use that for cantina refreshes like crazy. Get all these characters built. All right, for the GAC strategy in block zero, as you qualify and you start with geos, um, put the geos in the bottom front zone uh, on defense. You'll fight a lot of accounts that are a lot higher GP. Um, don't get discouraged. A lot of those people are in the lower brackets of GAC because they don't actually play. So play against them, get your points. If they don't play, you'll still get the win. It's frustrating, but uh, you got to live with it in the current system. In fair matches against anybody with similar GP, the Geos are a struggle early on in the game. So put them on defense. Let your uh, opponents struggle with them. Now, Geos won't be a problem for you. If you're a Relic Snow Trooper, you just go in with those Imperial Troopers, and you shred the Geos with the Snow Trooper, and you laugh at them and take all your banners. So that's nice. You also have a dash team uh, getting built up, and when dash gets to relics, he's going to be devastating in Grand Arena. So it looks a little like this. You've got your Geo fleet under Tarkin. You've got trash characters in the front, the Geo characters on the bottom, and then just absolute garbage in that back zone, hoping that they don't get through your Geos, and then save most of your good stuff for offense. You'll have things like Vader, the troopers, uh, on offense. In Conquest, the Trooper team with Vader should be fine for easy Conquest, complete block zero. Uh, start bringing these characters to Relic level, you're going to do fine. All right, we're going to have the Snow Trooper, we're going to have uh, Vader, and we're going to have Dash Rendar. And that's going to be your Conquest teams. Uh, the Bosque Bounty Hunters will also be coming up. As I said, we need to gear up those Bounty Hunters uh, to get that Chewbacca unlock. So the Bounty Hunters in easy Conquest will do just fine. Geos are also very functional for easy conquest, so you've got quite a few teams. And uh, within a short period of time, you should be uh, completing easy conquest all the way to the end. Moving into normal, it's going to be more of a challenge. Uh, at first, with this build, I think you're going to be stuck on zone 3. Again, this is in the transition, hitting 85 the first you know month or so after you hit 85. As we start building more relics and more teams with relics on them, uh, of course, that's going to get easier. Remember that mediocre rewards in normal are just so much better than anything you can get in easy. Just get out of easy as soon as you can and never go back to easy. As soon as you qualify for normal, go to normal. 
for guild goals. Um, to qualify for Wat Tambor, you need each Geo to be at 16,500 galactic power. Uh, most of them can get there without being gear 12, but uh, you know you can build them up to gear 12. It'd be nice. Geo Bruda Alpha, uh, you want to put a little extra investment in him to make sure that the leader of your team doesn't just die. Uh, but you can get those geos all up and ready to go. That's a good selling point for getting into a guild if a guild knows that every time they run Dark Side GOTB, you'll be helping them to get a Wat Tan Boar Shard, or at least trying to. Then uh, that, that'll help you get into some of the better guilds. You'll have three teams for Dark Side. You'll have those troopers that we talked about for the assault battles, the geos, and you'll have Vader. You'll have unlocked Emperor Palpatine by now, and you'll have that team coming up. Um, I suggest getting into a guild at this point that's doing light side Hoth and dark side Geo. At this point, it's better for you to be in territory battles where you can have good participation uh, than to be in... Uh, if you get accepted into a guild that's doing the harder territory battles, that's fine. You can do that. But light side Hoth has a rebel officer Leia Organa shards in it. And later in the game, you're never going to want to go backwards and go into Light Side Hoth to get those shards. So you're kind of stuck buying her for Guild Event to two tokens, which is expensive. So you can kind of take the edge off of that early game by taking a guild that's, uh, let's say, more moderate GP that's doing Light Side Hoth and Dark Side Geo. All right, as, uh, as we transition into Block 1, what are we doing with Fleet? Uh, this is going to be a challenging transition because we're going to have the Geos. We're not going to have the Hyena Bomber. We're not going to have the Vulture Droid that makes this uh, team harder to deal with. So we're going to build the Geos up with the Hound's Tooth. Uh, we're going to have a Gear 12 boss. We're going to be putting energy and effort into him. And we're going to have Anakin's ship as a reinforcement to deal with opposing Hound's Tooth. Uh, this is going to beat almost any early fleet pretty reliably. But it is going to plateau. So as you start to get your malevolence online, there will be a point, and in the past, this is where I've recommended that you uh, players should relic a Geo Spy or Sunfac, one or the other. And that takes your Geo Fleet and gives it enough either, you know, with Sunfac, makes Sunfac harder to kill so it get, gets you tanky enough to last longer. Or with Spy, it gives you enough power to just be able to push through almost any other ship in the game. But uh, with this build, we really can't, take the detour to be farming and, and relicking those geos so we're going to have to just live with it and, and let the ship performance drop off a little bit the malevolence should come online pretty soon again if you've gotten a decent guild you should be getting enough of that get two currency that you can get the malevolence online in about five to six months of being in a good guild if you started at level one free to play you know, maybe it took you a couple months to get into that guild. So maybe five months in or six months in, something like that. You should be seeing the Malevolence unlocked at five stars. Anyway, we'll get that unlocked. And again, we'll be using the same team. We'll be using the Geos with Hound's Tooth and Anakin as a reinforcement. This is a bit of a short-term short -term sacrifice. Um, and again, I've, I've played this out on my Abtisio account. I didn't get top fleet placement, and the build still worked okay. So before we go into the details of the transition, block one into block zero, building the CLS team, let's talk about how we're building again. Three layers of priority. Uh, the main focus all the time, now that we're 85, we're always going to be farming the hard nodes for the next journey, or the current journey that we're on. Um, in tier two, we're going to be working on journey characters and then other teams and then the tier one stuff we're going to use any energy that we're not using on those hard node farms all of that's going to go to relic one specific character that we're working on so we pick one relic target at a time farm our hard nodes then all the rest of that energy goes into farming that character to relic so that gives us this graphic where we can always see the characters that we're farming and the characters that we're relicking and then, of course, the Tier 2 stuff, you just have to have uh, set up in your account in the right way. So let's walk through this bit by bit again. In the first few weeks, we're working on Jedi Knight Anakin twice a day, getting Ewok Elder built up. We kick in with these other things. We start farming 
uh, Cantina characters, making sure we get the fleets, soldier, spy. Work a little bit on farm boy Luke and old Ben, get them going. Now weeks 11 to 20, we're starting to finish out uh, some of these farms and transition them over to other farms. Bastila will kick in after Elder is done. Wicket's going to kick in after Vandor is done. This is where we've hit 85. We're working on our Snow Trooper Relic and getting that done. This is the transition that we're in right now. And in the Cantina character farms at this point, uh, Dash Rendar is the highest priority, getting him to seven stars. We want Geo Brood Alpha unlocked, and then L337 and Kira to six stars. So after this block one, as we transition, you're going to see these CLS relics start to kick in. CLS, Chupio, um, Chewbacca, Han Solo, and C-3PO. Um, they're going to be on the relic uh, bar here in the middle. Xanadu Blood's going to kick in after we get Bosk to seven stars. IG-2000 will come after Chupio gets farmed. Admiral Radis and Talzin are going to be uh, kicking in here. And then the Houndstooth and Wicket are just continue for a while. And, of course, the same fleet farms. We've got the Rebel Y-Wing and the uh, um, Mistons U-Wing and, and the Outrider all under farm. Outrider and uh, the Rebel Y-Wing are single shard drops, so it's just going to take uh, something like about 30 weeks to farm those. And there ain't nothing to do but just keep farming them. After Kira... Uh, in Cantina, we're getting the two Ewoks ready, Chief Chirpa and Paplu. Now, hopefully you've bought enough Paplu shards that this isn't going to be an issue. And this uh, timing that we've given for Paplu is just going to be you catching up on some of the characters that you might not already have reliced out to where they need to be. In week 31 to 40, this is where we transition out of block one into block two. We'll talk more about that later. But we're finishing out the CLS team. We're going into Old Daka, Harrison Dula, characters like that. Uh, Hera, of course, is part of the Profundity journey. That's the start, officially, of the Profundity relics. And Old Daka, I put that in there as optional. There is room in this uh, build for us to go ahead and get uh, Mother Tiles in. And eventually, Night Sister Zombie. We're actually going to set up uh, five Night Sisters without Zombie and try to get Daka to Relic and get a fourth Assault Battle under farm to Challenge Tier 1. And then we'll get Zombie to make that team better, but that'll come a little later on in the journey. You see, starting out in week 35 or 36. Biston's U-Wing is probably done out of the shop by now, but there's room here in the farming guide where we can finish that off. We haven't really needed that ship. Of course, we need it for the uh, profundity journey, but we haven't needed it so far, so we've, we've been able to wait for it. And then Shock T can be farmed out of, uh, out of here as an optional character to get the uh, Thibault first going. Night Sister Spirit, you see, gets farmed in here right before Harrison Dula, and uh, that's going to give us the fifth character that we need. Uh, she's on the same node as Plo's ship, so farming. Night Sister Spirit also gives us Plo, and we want that ship anyway, so it's pretty fantastic. And then we finally farm Hera out of there. And then again, Arc Trooper is part of that optional 501st team. Or if not, you can just use that Cantina energy for signal data or catching up anything you're behind on. In this phase, there's a lot of signal data needed, so depending on how that goes for you, um, you'll be able to figure that out as you play through it. And then in the last part of this, weeks 41 to 54, that's just where we're finishing up all the farms, doing the last six relics for the profundity journey. And there's a bunch of free space in here. Nothing new is started. That allows you to plug in whatever you have for your next journey. Canteen Energy, of course, is still going to be stressed for... Uh, getting all the signal data that you need. You can work on Arc Trooper, get him finished up, even if you have room for it otherwise. Working on signal data, working on your next journey. All right. Block one. So block one of that journey is going to be the CLS part, and it's going to include Old Daka to lock down another assault battle to challenge Tier 1. Uh, we also, in block one, are going to need to start making purchases of aero magnifiers and droid brains. This uh, journey for profundity requires one Relic 8 and one Relic 9 character, so we have to get those under control. In Block 1, we're going to be using the Shard Shop to maximum potential. Watch my gear guide to understand that. 
Um, use your get one for those purple and gold pieces again, those 360 cost pieces. And the income from assault battles on this team is going to be required. So um, uh, we're going to get uh, the trooper team is going to do two assault battles. The rebel team is going to be able to do one assault battle. And the night sisters are going to be able to do one. That's going to help us a lot. All right. Um, the sticky part in block two. We need to think about already in block one. So we need that R8 on Cassian. We need the Relic 9 on Radis. And the difference between the Relic 8, uh, Executor needs two Relic 8s, which doesn't seem too bad. But this Relic 9 on Radis is literally makes it twice as many of these materials that you have to buy. You have to do eight purchases for the Executor. You have to do 16 purchases for the profundity it's really a significant difference and it's why i don't go into this journey and just build the profundity right out of the box it's why we have to take time to build the cls team before we go into the profundity journey because for most players you're just going to need enough time uh, to build up that uh, build up the crystals and be able to buy those parts for those high relics now if you're a player who spends uh, money for crystals I still do not recommend going straight into the profundity. I really do recommend following this guide. Even if you're a spender, even if you can get ahead on these materials, or if you can get gifted into a guild that's already doing C pit, whatever it is, I still recommend the journey as it stands, doing a full relic CLS team before the profundity. But, uh, but in the end, if you're a free-to-play player, you have to do it that way, because otherwise there's just not going to be enough time to buy these materials. Now, the Relic 8 takes a part called the Arrow Magnifier. They're normally received by completing challenge, pit, uh, challenge tier pit raids and high-level territory wars. And then R9 takes the Droid Brains that are, again, from, from very high-level territory wars or are available out of the shop. That's So, uh, for us, uh, that's how we're going to be able to get them out of the weekly shipments. They're in there once per week. You need a total of 16 purchases. You need to make 12 purchases of the arrow magnifiers and four purchases of the droid brains. Again, that's assuming that each purchase you make is five parts. And uh, we'll take a look at it. You can see that the arrow magnifiers are offered as five parts or ten parts. So when I'm talking about all those purchases, you need a total of 12 purchases of five. You need a total of 60 arrow magnifiers. 1250 crystals per purchase, 2500 if you go for the 10. And then for droid brains, it's 1500 for five. And you can see here, uh, the droid brains show up in that weekly shipments uh, the same way as the arrow magnifiers do. I've set the timeline with uh, several relic cycles at three weeks or four weeks. And, and you'll see some cases where I'm, I'm basically, I'm putting three relics in over eight weeks. And that's to kind of balance this out where you're trying to get crystals for the refreshes for your cantina. You're trying to get crystals to buy these arrow magnifiers. So basically I've put space in there to make sure that the, uh, let's say, uh, I'm not going to say average player because if you're an average player, you're probably not using my guides. Uh, so most people who use these guides are competitive players. So if you're a good competitive player, this should keep you on a timeline and give you plenty of space to get those crystals, to get those refreshes, signal data, balance it all out. Uh, fully efficient players or people doing an alt account can probably even do better on the timeline, but I gave it some space. So 12.50 for five, 12 purchases need a total of 15,000 crystals. 1,500 for five, you need four purchases of those droid brains for 6,000 total. So that is 21,000 crystals. But remember, guys, this is a 54-week journey. So if we look at the first three months where we're getting to level 85 and we say, okay, we're not making purchases then, it's only after we hit 85 that we're going to make these purchases, it's still one purchase every two weeks. So something like 700 crystals per week is what you have to save up. And you have to do that over weeks but it's not, uh, it's not desperate. It's not as bad as it seems, right? The other issue with getting Relic 8 or 9 uh, stuff on a, a new account, you do have to build impulse detectors from the scavengers, and they have a pretty bad exchange rate. And you have to buy, uh, build uh, 
uh, some keypads for it too. So if, if you're looking to build these aero magnifiers, take a look at Lightside 9F Normal. It's got uh, Mark 12 bayonets that are used for making relic characters, and it can also be used to crunch up for those impulse detectors. But the reason I suggest this note, it also has Mark 8 Bio, Mark 3 Hollow Projectors. It just, everything about this node is, is built for the scavenger and crushing it up to get more relic materials. So this is just a fantastic node uh, for pushing relics. So that's what I would suggest getting your materials. Now for the, the keypads, Relic 9, uh, again, it has a pretty bad exchange rate. Uh, with good event participation and again smart use of that wandering scavenger out of uh, conquest you can build up these materials and get your keypads you don't need too many of them so again you've got a long time to build them just pay attention to it don't wait till the last minute and then find out that you're out of these materials just uh, you know one or two uh, over the course of a week or something like that and you'll you'll get there in plenty of time all right, the Bounty Hunter team, again, it's not the best Bounty Hunter team, but this is the Bounty Hunter team we're going to use. Um, I This is the exact team, the, the team that you're looking at right here, as it stands with that gear, got me a seven-star Chewbacca. So it uh, maybe I get good RNG, but, but I think I got it on like the second or third try with this team. I did put some good mods on Bosk, and I put some good mods on Cad Bane. But other than that, uh, the rest of the team, even even when I say good mods, it wasn't like this account is very developed and I had Galactic Legend mods to put on Bosk. This account was less than a year old when I did this. So the mods were okay. Uh, the characters were at this gear tier. And, and Cad Bane went crazy and killed everybody, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, it's uh, th th this team works okay. Um we need to unlock that seven-star Chewbacca again if we're going for this early CLS team and we're going to take it to Relics. Uh, we have to build these bounty hunters up enough. Now, the reason we want to build this team specifically is these the characters are also the pilots that we need to get the Millennium Falcon. Once we get Profundity, we want to time it out so that we have that seven-star Millennium Falcon at the same time that we get Profundity so we can use that Millennium Falcon as a starting ship. It's not a requirement, but we definitely want it as a starting ship. We want 7-star Chewie as soon as possible. We're going to build a, a team of five, I say here 7-star smugglers, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to build uh, five smugglers, and Chewbacca is our fifth smuggler. So we want him to 7-stars uh, to get him relict anyway. Uh, so those bounty hunters are going to be critical. They're going to be a gearing priority for us in this phase, for sure. At the time of this Holocron, Grief Karga is still on that node with the Rebel Y-Wing. He's a better fifth than Django, and just in general makes the bounty hunter team better. Django is a more versatile character. Um, Grief makes the event easier. So, you know, gear up Django if you want a more versatile character. Uh, gear up Grief if you want the event to be easier. Pick one or the other, don't gear both. And if Grief's been moved off of that node by the time you're farming the Rebel Y-Wing, then of course that will be out of the question. Uh, remember, the Bounty Hunters are one of the three top priorities after you hit level 85. Geos, Imperial Troopers, and these guys. All right, the reason we're working so hard on building those smugglers is the Smugglers Run event. Here is the top tier, the deadly tier. And uh, the requirements are five smuggler characters, six stars or higher. Now we're building Dash Rendar, and Dash Rendar can do enough damage to beat this event once he's reliced with no problem. So as long as we get other smugglers to meet the criteria to unlock the event, we're good to go. This is an example of what you get. Out of that tier, you get six colored mods. There's no gray mods. They're all going to be uh, green, blue, purple, or gold. So you get colored mods. Uh, five star and uh, the, the quality is, is random. Um, you get a bunch of slicing materials and 300,000 uh, credits. So everything about this is good loot. Now, for, for let, let's just say in general, uh, like the executor build, 
the the loot out of Smuggler's Run is not so good that I want to take a big detour on the timeline and build for Smuggler's Run. However, we're building Smugglers in this Profundity build anyway, so let's build them up front and let's get access. Excuse me, <clears throat> and let's get access to the Smuggler's Run loot as soon as we can. Why not? It's there. We have to build the characters anyway. So to get smuggling, to get the six, six star smuggling up and running, um, we do want the bounty hunters geared for Chewbacca. Dash is going to go to Relic for profundity eventually, but we're going to bring him to toward the front of the Relic queue. Six stars is enough to qualify. So especially for L3 and Kira, they don't necessarily need to be seven stars. Chewbacca and Vandor... We want them at seven stars anyway for other reasons, so we might as well have them at seven. That's the plan. So it's a timing, and I've created in this journey so that it all comes out. And if, again, if you go back and you look at the at the graphic guide, you're going to see this timing that right at the time that you're finished farming up Bosk, he's going to be at seven stars. Cantina characters are farmed. Dash is getting relicked as the third character, and right on that timing, the bounty hunters have to be geared for Chewy, and then Dash uh, can already wreck that uh, tier four. Um, the Vandor needs a little bit of gear, and the Zeta. We talked about that in the Zetas for Block Zero, and uh, otherwise, this should be pretty straightforward to be successful with. So let's grab it. All right, once we have that sort of uh, underway. Uh, at the same time, we're going to be want we're going to want to be in the shops. We're going to be want to finish out Luke Skywalker and Old Ben. If we haven't been able to grab them out of the shops, now is the time where you have to circle back around to the cantina and uh, finish them up. R two D two you can unlock with Empire characters. We got plenty of those. We got Vader troopers, all kinds of stuff. So R two should not be an issue. That gives us a CLS team. The CLS journey is super easy. We don't have to gear these characters up too high. Put any kind of decent mods on them and you're fine. Uh, gear 8 is, is plenty for this journey. Uh, I did have Princess Leia um, geared up a little more uh, just because uh, I was planning to go into the JML journey at some point anyway. Her gear is super easy to build compared to other characters. So if you, uh, if you want to gear characters up a little bit, just make sure they're part of a future journey, which... Uh, you know, Stormtrooper, Han, Leia, Obi-Wan, they can all be uh, overgeared. It won't hurt you. But to get this unlocked, like the Bounty Hunters, to get Chewbacca unlocked, you need Gear 11, Gear 12 on some of your Bounty Hunters. To get CLS unlocked, simple, Gear 8, give it a try. Do it a few times, you'll get it. All right, we can also unlock Emperor Palpatine once we've got all these Rebels, so it's no problem. We should 7-star him at this point. The CLS team. The plan includes four of the CLS team characters. Uh, Han does come from raids. So when you see him in the relic timing, he's relatively late in the relic timing. And that's just because I can't say when your Han is going to get to seven stars. I have a feel for when that should be, but uh, there's a little bit of flexibility in, in Han's timing, and that's based on him needing to get to seven stars. Also, if, if you join a guild where the pit raid is not on auto, so if enough of the guild members have Han Solo, then it goes into sim mode. You join the raid, and it just sims, and it gives you Han, Han Solo shards. If you happen to be in a guild where the pit raid is actually still has to be beaten, you can put a Zeta onto Darth Vader's leadership. It takes away turn meter, on hit and you can build a team around Vader with that Zeta leadership going to the pit raid and you can literally kill the Rancor without him ever taking a turn just keep removing turn meter removing turn meter use skills use Tarkin use other characters that can um, take advantage of Vader's lead and uh, yeah, with a relatively simple team you can solo that raid with a Vader team get all the way through it and get top credit, and uh, that will help you uh, get better gear, better loot. So if it's simmed, you got no choice. You just take the simmed rewards. If you can actually get in there, you can look at the Zeta 
on Vader's lead to try to cheese that and get ahead a little bit. Okay, so while you're building this uh, CLS team to Relic, uh, also you're going to be getting Harris and Dula out of the Cantina. Uh, so Thrawn is good. It's still, yeah, it, it, he, he helps the team for Emperor Palpatine, Mara Jade. There's still a lot of stuff. Now, in, in this build, I don't think there's any need to have Phoenix right away. Emperor Palpatine is going to get unlocked with the CLS requirements. You can get him at least to five stars very early on. So I'm going to say with Phoenix, wait until close to the end of block one. You know, wait until CLS is finishing up. There's no reason to waste all your currency. When you're ready to farm Harrison Dula out of the cantina, that determines your timing. Ezra Bridger can be bought out of the fleet store. By this time, the pressure should be off of your fleet store. You should have plenty of room to, to make Ezra purchases as they come along and build him as a character out of that shop. That way you don't have to worry about farming him up with the cantina. It's 33 purchases. It, it's really not even that much to build a character out of the shop anymore. All right, other things to do. You've got your five Jedi at five stars or more. You'll be able to unlock Grandmaster Yoda. As you build the characters, the Jedi towards seven stars, you can get Grandmaster Yoda to seven stars. Uh, all the tools are there to do it. Geos can be used to unlock Padme, and she'll take over the team from Bastila when you have her. It's a great early game team. And then again, we have to unlock R2 for that CLS journey. So with the Galactic Republic, I know people get confused by this. I've had so many questions that I'm going to put it in the video. So I'm going to explain the Galactic Republic team. It starts here. In the early game, it's a Jedi team. Bastila Shan leads Qui-Gon, Anakin, Mace, Ahsoka Tano. Once you get Padme unlocked, you make this Padme team. And uh, it's Padme, Anakin, Mace, Ahsoka. And because we want Plo in his ship, you can actually put Plo in this team. You can keep Qui-Gon in this team. Uh, whatever you want to do. I would rather put gear on Plo because he's a pilot and he has a good ship than I would on Qui-Gon. He has a good Omicron. He's very useful. But he's also he can already be useful without having a lot of gear. So I would leave Qui-Gon at the lower gear. I would work on gearing up Plo and make him part of the Padme team. When you go into Grand Arena, if you have the Omicron on Qui-Gon Jinn, then uh, this becomes your team. So Qui-Gon just goes in place of Padme. So just to be clear, Bastila leads it when you want a team that's all Jedi. Padme leads it when you want a good Galactic Republic team. In Grand Arena, Qui-Gon Jinn replaces Padme. So Padme's leading the team pretty much everywhere except Grand Arena. I hope that makes sense to y'all. So yeah, it's in total it's a seven character team, but it's flexible. You get two teams out of it in 3v3. You can build a Jedi team under um, Bastila. You could build a team under Padme and still have a team under Qui-Gon. So let's talk about Omicrons. First Omicron we want for this account is Dash. And it's a GAC Omicron, but we're going to take him to Relic. We're going to do Smuggler's Run. And this guy is OP in GAC early on. So rock on. Dash Rindar Omicron. First Omicron for this account. My recommendation. Second one, again, Qui-Gon Jinn. His Omicron is based on character speed. It's pretty rare in the game to have something that gives this much power to his team when all of the characters can just be pretty much garbage. So just imagine a 200 speed character. It gets 30 times its speed. It will gain 6,000 offense, which takes it from being like a gear nine character to suddenly acting like a Relic 5 character. It's crazy. It's crazy how much power this Omicron gives. Uh, so it's, it's a team that can definitely punch up. So you put this team together, you put weak characters there, and they hit like their Relic characters. It's pretty awesome. Third one is Mara Jade. Again, we're eventually going to build the Phoenix. We're going to put Thrawn in here. Uh, we have to start out with it probably with TIE Pilot. Remember, we're building the TIE Pilot anyway uh, because we wanted that Imperial TIE ship for our initial fleet. So even though we're not like on an executor journey, we still end up with Tark and we still end up with the TIE Pilot being built. Uh, so this could be the early team. And then whenever you unlock Thrawn, you kick the TIE Pilot out of here and chuck Thrawn in instead. 
and you have a nice little 5v5 team for Territory Wars or, um, you know, of course, Mara Jade can do some nice magic in um, Grand Arena as well. The Omicron's a Territory War Omicron, but uh, this team is still good for GAC. And eventually, uh, you can even, once you get some good speed onto Thrawn, you can kick Vader out and beat stuff without Vader even in that team. Fourth Omicron I'm recommending is Savage Opress. Uh, we're not planning to relic him as part of this journey, but uh, Savage is a shop character. He's pretty easy to gear, not too bad. And even already at lower gear, uh, he can beat uh, a lot of teams. Similarly with Wampa, um, again, I recommended that we we're going to build Veers, spend for some gear. But then like eight or ten months in, we should have no problem having a, a seven-star Wampa. And we could build him up to gear 12 and start uh, prepping him to get relics. So if you love GAC, when you're done with the profundity journey, maybe you look at relicking this Wampa and Savage. But for now, we're going to put the Omicrons on, and I'm going to recommend that you beat teams that look like the character that you built. So if Savage is gear 10, and the opposing uh, player put a gear 10 uh, Ewok team, uh, Wampa at gear 10 is going to beat gear 10 Ewoks. Uh, it's a 5v1, right? It's a one, or a 1v5, I mean, however you want to call it. So one Wampa at gear 10 can beat five characters at gear 10. Uh, Ewoks, Phoenix, uh, Wampa can beat Aiden, Troopers, a bunch of stuff. Similar with Savage. We just put Savage first because he's a shop character and he's easier to build. Wampa takes longer. So that's the, the Omicron idea. And then again, just as a, a kind of a public service announcement, I, I don't... Even if you love GAC, don't hog all your Omicrons for GAC. Do spend some of them on some of the better Omicrons for Territory War to help out your guild. I like a ratio of 1 to 4. If 1 out of 4 is helping the guild, it's pretty good. If you really like PvE, then of course you can do uh, more, um, let's say, uh, Territory Battle Omicrons and things like that. Zeta's in Block 1. We're building Boss. We're building the Hound's Tooth. Uh, to get Bosk fully up and ready to go to make sure that we can do that Chewbacca event all the way to seven stars, I do recommend uh, putting a Zeta on his On the Hunt. Uh, Emperor Palpatine, Emperor of the Galactic Empire, can use a Zeta. Um, the Ninth Zeta, Jedi Knight Anakin, uh, it's just so useful to, to Zeta him for anything he's doing. Qui-Gon Jinn, assuming that he's going to be your second Omicron, maybe is around your tenth one. And then I put just a laundry list of stuff, right? Because I, I, it's hard for me to tell the timing of, of any account. It's going to vary how fast you get your Zetas, how fast these characters are ready for the Zetas. So I'm going to go through 20 and basically say, like in the 11 to 15 range, you're going to want to put all the Zetas on to uh, Commander Luke Skywalker. Han shoots first and 3PO Omai oh as a priority. And 16 to 20, uh, Chewie, Loyal Friend, Admiral Raddus, and Mon Mothma. So the teams that you're building for your journey and for your full Relic teams uh, get a lot of these Zetas, right? So Padme needs Zetas, Ahsoka needs Zetas, stuff like that. But in this build specifically, uh, you know, look to these as your first priority. If you can get Zetas onto Padme, that's pretty awesome. The GAC strategy, the Omicron Dash team is going to be a really hard defense. Um, so basically you put Dash, L3, and uh, Kira, I'm sorry, you put L3, Vandor, and Dash in a team. If it's 5v5, you can add Kira and another character. If it's 3v3, you just do Dash, L3, and Vandor. And for a lot of opponents in the early game, this is going to be hard to beat. If you can get any kind of speed at all onto your Dash Rendar, I would recommend starting to use that as a defense. Uh, the Geo Fleet still is good. If you've got that under Malevolence, then go ahead and stick it uh, under Malevolence. If you don't, then continue with it under the Executrix. On offense in GAC, you're going to have a lot of good teams. you got the Veers Troopers now. Um, you've got Geos on offense now, putting the Dash Rendar team on defense. You've got uh, Emperor Palpatine Vader, you've got the Bounty Hunters, the CLS team is getting huge, and a Gear 12 Padme, you know, a, a team there that you can do something with if uh, 
if uh, she's not going with Qui-Gon. So it looks something like this, either the Executrix with Geoships or the Malevolence once you get it. Uh, Omicron Dash in the front, and then again, I recommend Trash Defenses. I'm keeping everything else good for offense. As the CLS team gets online and starts going to Relic levels, then that team is going to go on defense. So basically, we're just going to keep leapfrogging our best defensive team. It's going to start out with the Geos. It's going to go into the Dash team. And then from there, it's going to go on into the CLS team on defense. And the idea here is to have a showstopper defense on the bottom. And you're going to have, uh, hopefully, a better fleet than most opponents. And they get to clear one zone. And as long as you have enough stuff on offense to clear two zones, you'll win. And it's not like a high banner win. It, it, who cares? Uh, once you have more zones and more banners, you get a win. And uh, to ensure that we can get more wins with fewer teams, we have to really hold that bottom front on defense, hold on ships, and then as long as we can clear two zones, hold up the opponent. It's what I call a tactical win. All right. In Conquest, the Trooper team has come online. Um, you need Gideon at Gear 12 if you really want the Trooper team to work. Uh, I don't see any way in this build to, to get Gideon in there. So the Trooper team is going to start falling out of uh, viability in, in uh, the higher zones in Normal Conquest. And once you get to Hard Conquest, it's going to be a non-competitive team. So unfortunately, it's a throwaway team, but that does mean we can borrow Piet and put it in the Vader team. Um, we've got an EP team we'll probably get up and running with Vader. Uh, we could put an undergeared range trooper in there or something. We could put the snow trooper in there if we need more hitting power. We can put in Piet if we want to stack Emperor's Trap. You can actually build um, a, a team of Imperial troopers with Veer's lead and just put Vader into that team. So you got a lot of flexibility. You have something there that's an Empire team that can work in Conquest. Bringing Padme and Jedi Knight Anakin to gear 12 helps. But uh, these guys are going to be very low on the priority. You have Geos to build, Troopers to build, Bounty Hunters, Smugglers. And, uh, you know, we're not setting aside the Zetas right away. So the Padme team is going to be pretty mediocre. Uh, it, it, if you get the Zetas on it and you get it up in gear, it, it's very viable. But, um, you know, for this account, it's going to be... It should still be okay-ish in uh, normal conquest, but once you get to hard conquest, it's going to be in, uh, ineffective at this level. The geos will be relatively ineffective. Okay, so I've talked about a lot of things that aren't going to work, but uh, but you will have the CLS team coming online, and the CLS team is just going to pretty much smash everything in normal conquest. So I can't think of something in Normal Conquest that the CLS team with a couple data disks won't just walk through. So you're really going to rely on that now as your powerhouse to get you all the way to the end. And you're going to use a lot of these other teams as support when, when you know that they can get a win. The, the Vader team, the Geos, the Padme team, whatever you, whatever you can use there. At the end of it, after Profundity, you know, when you go all the way through this journey and you're looking forward to Hard Conquest, just having the CLS team isn't going to be good enough. You'll have the Padme team started, but you'll need more for Hard Conquest. So make sure that once you finish up Hope of the Rebellion, you take a good look at what it is that you want to do moving in for Hard Conquest. All right, the guild goals for Block 1. We're building the CLS team to Relic. Uh, if, if you were in this team, I recommended originally at, at Block Zero that we were talking about a guild that's in Light Side Hoth and Dark Side Geo. Um, if it's a good guild and a lot of the people in the guild are growing kind of at the same rate you're going growing, then it's great. You know, stay with that guild. But uh, this path is, is, I think, pretty effective and efficient. And if you're following it, you're probably going to be um, getting further ahead faster than most of the other people in your guild. And that means that you're going to outgrow the guild on the way up. And by the time you get this full Relic CLS team, you should be able to get a much better guild. Now, the CLS team is a good team for uh, the challenge tier Rancor pit in, in, uh, um, in, in two or three in... Uh, so you'll be able to tell a guild that you have the Geos for Watt, you have a CLS team for the Sea Pit, you're building toward Profundity, 
there, there's a lot of guilds that are going to accept you based on the fact that you have a good account being built and you have a good plan for the future. So uh, I, I think pretty easily at this point you could get a guild with 200 million or more total galactic power doing, um, let's say, Dark Side Geo and maybe the uh, Rise of the Empire or something like that as a territory battle. Or maybe Light Side Geo, depending on the guild. So upgrade your guild at this point. Think about it. Consider it. The CLS team is a great selling point for Sea Pit. The Geos are a great selling point for um, Dark Side Geo TB. Sometimes if you apply for a guild, especially with the new territory battle being out, they might say, great, but we need a Relic 6 Kane and Jairus for the uh, platoons on the new territory battle. Um, I, If it was me, I would respectfully decline and say, look, I'm perfectly willing to do a Relic that the guild needs, but if you need it in the short term, I'm really focused on getting this profundity. Uh, I'm not going to take the detour to, to do relic characters. Or if they ask you for like Shakti and the clones for light side GOTB, uh, just opt out of that. It might, in your opinion, you might think you're giving up a good guild, but if, if it's going to take you a four to six week detour of relicking stuff for the guild, uh, I would not do it. I would advise against it. You want to get the fleet, you want to get that fleet placement. Those 400 crystals a day are calling you. All right, with the shops, um, what I'm going to say here, I was going to do another section on shops and talk through a bunch of stuff, but honestly, I don't know. I, I can't really tell. There's so much randomness in how the game works and what shards you might get and how much currency you're going to get, what kind of guild you're in, that I think by this time, I'm not sure where you're at in the shops. So I'm not going to try to set the timing. I mentioned all the stuff that you need up front. So go back and look at that if you need to. But basically, you're going to have to continuously look at the path, understand what you're building, what the next big milestone is, and, and get into the shop and buy the right characters. You're going to have to balance between buying characters with that currency and feeding the shard shop with that currency to stay on track with relics. So it, it, again, I can't explain this all to you. Um, in the Opticio project, I do have... Uh, a couple of holocrons in there that are very specifically every single thing that I did for two weeks straight. So you can go look at those and you can watch how I work the account, how I build it, how I balance between the, the shops and, and farming and all that. And that I think would be better help than me trying to explain it here. Okay. Um, once you get CLS underway, uh, I, I do strongly suggest that you select the Profundity Journey and keep that in your Journey tab and constantly look at it so that you always know what's next and make sure that you're not missing something, all right? That's going to conclude the second part of this Holocron. Uh, again, we started out, we worked our way more or less through 85. In this second block, we've worked our way through the Relic CLS team. We're getting ready to go into the next phases and work on this profundity and finish that journey out. So that's what we're going to talk about, the transition, the profundity build. Uh, again, we're going to go through the relevant game modes and what to expect, finish out block two, and talk about what's next. That's going to wrap it up for the second Holocron in this series. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the third one.